All right, let's get ready to read uh, Enoch chapter 6. Now, I find this interesting. Enoch chapter 6 talks about the angels wanting to play with the women. And uh, then you got Genesis 6, uh, which is the sons of God and the daughters of men. So Genesis 6 and Enoch 6 match. What about 6? What is, what's up with the number 6? Now remember, the giants had six fingers and six toes. But here it is in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 18, we read, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count, count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six, six hundreds, three score, and six. Uh, three score is 60. So his number is 660 and six. Six, six, six. Very interesting. Coincidence? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. All right, so let's read X, uh, Enoch 6. It's funny, Genesis 6 talks about the giants. And oh, by the way, uh, the United Nations, which created the Israeli state in 1948, uh, which is a um, fulfillment of Bible prophecy, uh, of course, I think it's the fulfillment of Bible prophecy of the wheat and the tares, gathering the tares to be bundled and burned. But that's my guess. They, they designated Mount Hermon as a cultural heritage site. They actually have a presence there. They built some kind of a building on top of Mount Hermon, from what I understand. Matter of fact, let me look that up real quick. Uh, let's see. According to ascensionglossary.com, uh, in the United Nations buffer zone between Mount, uh, Syria and Israeli occupied territory is the highest permanently manned United Nations position in the world known as... Uh, Oh, they nicknamed it Hermon Hotel. So, uh, hmm, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to read this ascensionglossary.com. It's kind of interesting, really. Uh, let's see. According to this, and I'm quoting, according to the Synoptic Gospels, Mount Hermon is the location of the transfiguration of Jesus, an event in which Jesus was transformed into a radiant altered state and was seen to be conversing with Moses and the prophet Elijah. In the occult science of numerology, the number 33 represents the ultimate attainment of higher consciousness. Mount Hermon is located at the 33rd parallel north, which is latitude 33 degrees north of the Earth's equator. Tracing the 33rd parallel to the exact opposite, exact opposite side of the globe directly points to the site of the most famous alleged UFO encounter in modern history, Roswell, New Mexico. So, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know. Um... In the book of Enoch, Mount Hermon is a place where the 200 of the watcher class of fallen angels descended to earth. They swear upon the mountain that they would take wives among the daughters of men and make mutual imprecation for their sin of interbreeding with earth women. Um, yeah. Let's see. So, yeah. 
And uh, according to them, this is where a lot of uh, Baal worship, B-A-A-L, you know, the false god of the Canaanites. So, yeah. Um, well, all right, so, you know, uh, this uh, Ascension Glossary is not a, I don't believe it's a Christian site, but I just thought I would point that out. So, all right, um, figures the United Nations has a hotel or, well, a barracks or whatever up there for the, uh, they keep an eye on things. So let's read chapter 6 of the book of Enoch. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heavens, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And I'm going to probably slaughter these names. And Je Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. They swear, then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And these are the names of their leaders. Sam Ayaz is their leader. Ara Kiba, Ramil, Kotha, Bil, Tamil, Ramil, Daniel, Ezekiel, Bara, Kizal, Esiel, Armaros, Batarel, Ananel, Zakil, Samsapil, Satarel, Turel, Jamjel, Sariel. These are their chiefs of tens. All right, well, that's the end of chapter six. Now, why would the angels, the, the fallen angels, the ones that were kicked out of heaven, why would they want to take wives? Uh, you know, it says they lusted after them. I mean, I can understand, you know, uh, if they were male, uh, lusting after the women. I mean, I think every man that's not a sodomite has left, lusted after women at one time of their life or another, especially when you're young. But is there another reason why they would do this? Well, suppose they were trying to pollute the bloodline. After all, why was Mary picked as a virgin? Why is the virgin birth important? Why is that? Huh something to think about all right let's read seven and all the others together with them took unto them wives and each chose for himself one and they began to go in unto them and to defile and to defile themselves with them and they taught them to make charms charms you know they got a breakfast cereal called lucky charms with a leprechaun, right? Charms. Um, you know, if you ever read 
parts of the Kabbalah. You know, the Red String Club, uh, you know, like Madonna and the Hollywood crowd. They wear the red string as a uh, charm to keep away evil spirits. Yeah, like a piece of red string can control a fallen angel, right? And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots. Sounds like pharmacy, huh? And made them acquainted with plants. You know, there's plants that you could use for medicine and there's plants that you can use for poisons. And the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants and they became pregnant and they bear great giants whose height was 3,000 L's who consumed all the acquisitions of men and when men could no longer sustain them the giants turned against them and devoured mankind oh so the Canaanites do you know that the word cannibal comes from the word Canaan and Baal B-A-A-L Baal was a generic name for the false god. And Canaan, well, those were the Canaanites. They were the, the, the dwellers in the land. God said, go into the land. Israel, go in the land of Canaan and kill them all. Canaan, Baal, cannibals. Uh, but this is all just, you know, just a coincidence, right? Right. So when the men could no longer feed all these giants, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. Cannibals. They ate the people, right? And they began to sin against birds and against beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid... Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. The lawless ones. So let's stop for a minute and take a look at some uh, things in the Bible. In Leviticus 17, 12, Therefore I said among the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. Deuteronomy 12, 23, only be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life, and thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. You know, blood drinking, you know, what does Hollywood love to do movies about? Vampires. I'm Count Dracula. I want to suck your blood. <laughs> you know, think about it. Yeah, you know, Hercules, not Samson. You know, Hollywood is demonic to the core. Absolutely, you know. Um, Leviticus 17, 14. For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, ye shall eat the blood of no matter of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. Leviticus 7.26 Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be a fowl or a beast in any of your dwellings. I think the Lord doesn't want us messing around eating the blood. Uh, what do you say? What do you say? So... Yeah. Now remember, we just read that, uh, let's see. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. That is the last sentence in chapter 7. Is there a Bible witness to this? Mm, Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, 
Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Hey, Lord, I don't know. Is It wasn't my day to watch him. All right. And he, the Lord, said, What hast thou done? What have you done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. In other words, you're not going to be a farmer anymore. You can plant all you want. You can till the ground, do all, all that. It's not going to, nothing you plant is going to grow. Well, it might grow, but it's not going to, you, you could plant a fruit tree, but it's, the, the fruit tree's cursed. You're not going to be able to get any fruit off of it. So here it is. Cain was originally a farmer, but he ain't going to be a farmer anymore. Nuh-uh. Ain't going to happen. So if you could identify a group of people who are never dirt farmers, they would have to have other occupations. You know, like... Uh, Merchants and lawyers and doctors and judges and politicians and uh, yeah, you know. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Is there any kind of group of people that were fugitives and vagabonds? You know, the wandering, uh, the wandering, um, you know who? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that, right? So, all right, let's read. Chapter eight. And Aziel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them. Uh, in the introduction to chapter 6, I mentioned this. And what's interesting is, well, let me look it up real quick is there a witness to this in the bible first samuel 13 19 now there was no smith and you got to realize something a lot of time people's names were what their occupations were you know when somebody was called uh miller you know uh they would mill the grain. They would take grain and grind it into the flour. You know, oh, the millers, yeah. You've heard of blacksmiths? Well, they, instead of being a blacksmith, they just call themselves smiths. And believe it or not, smith used to be a very, very popular name among white people probably uh, 50, 60 years ago. It's not so much anymore, but now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. So the Philistines, one of the, you know, the giants, the Canaanites, um, they had... They had smiths, but the Hebrews didn't. So, but there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them spear, uh, swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen 
every man his share and his coulter and his axe and his mattock. So when they wanted to sharp get their uh, tools sharpened, they had to go down to the Philistines. You know, their, their axe. And I don't want to look up what a coulter and a mattock is. So maybe it has, maybe it's agricultural instruments. I don't know. I don't feel like looking it up. Point is, uh, like we looked at in the introduction, Genesis 4, the Canaanites, uh, well, the Cain, the, the children of Cain uh, were workers of metal. And here it is in the book of Enoch, chapter 8. And Aziel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates. Well, guess what? When King David, future King David, faced Goliath, what did, King, what did he have? He had a sword and a shield and a breastplate. Okay, and made known to them to make uh, to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them, and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. So what do we talk about? Beautifying of the eyelids. Uh, fake eyelashes. You know, uh, we're talking about cosmetics. You know, you know, Max Factor. Ask any lady about Max Factor. You know who he was? He was a, uh, a J that worked in Hollywood that used to make the um, actresses look nice nicer or try to and you're talking cosmetics you know fake eyelashes um, blush whatever yeah so costly stones hmm you mean like jewelry uh, how do you spell jewelry what are the first three letters of jewelry yeah. How do you spell jewelry? Uh, what's the first three letters? Uh-huh. Yeah. Is there a uh, connection there? And all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness, and they committed fornication, and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Some Jaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. You know, enchantments, you're talking uh, casting of spells, people. And Arma rose the resolving of enchantments. Bara Kijal taught astrology. Kokabel the constellations. So we're talking um, more astrology. Ezequiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Araquil, the signs of the earth. Shamshiel, the signs of the sun. And Sariel, the course of the moon. Uh, and as men perished, they cried. And their cry went up to heaven. So, who taught what? Now, I want you to think about something. I was studying the New Age. Well, I was actually getting into the New Age for a while, back in the late 80s. It actually made some sense. I mean, I knew corporate demon nominational Christianity was corrupted to the core. But the Lord showed me a couple things. And um, the, the thing is, these witches, they have to do, they have spell books. And they, what they have to do is go through all these rituals and 
enchantments and they, they sell, say certain words and blah, blah, blah. And if they know the name of the angel, they say that they have power over that angel, which is a crock. I mean, can you imagine? Hey, my name's Bob. Uh, say my name and see if I'll do your bidding. Uh, I don't think so. And an angel's a lot more powerful than I am, trust me. But that's the kind of nonsense that they teach these people. So here it is. You know the name of this angel and, and you do these little chants and cast these little spells and then the angel's going to do something. You know, that's witchcraft. And uh, the reason I think, I believe, that they have you go through all this rigmarole is so that they know what it is you want done. Oh, I don't like this person, so I'm going to do a, a death thingy or whatever. And that's, you know, they do this casting these spells or whatever. And uh, then the angel knows what it is that they want to do. Well, that's my guess. Because I don't believe the angels can read our minds. Of course, they've been watching mankind for, you know, thousands of years. You know, and uh, a lot of similarities there, a lot. But that's why they go through all those uh, spell books and enchantments and everything. It's so that the... Uh, so the, these little devils know what it is you're trying to accomplish. And I'm telling you people, sometimes I watch television just to see what they're doing. And I cannot believe all the witchcraft on cartoons and children's stu uh, shows. I mean, the last airbender. Witches talk about uh, the elements. Uh, earth, wind, well, the air. Earth, wind, fire. Um, let's see, earth, wind, fire. Now, well, there's more to it. I can't think of them all. Oh, earth, wind, fire, water. And the last is spirit. And they had a TV, I mean, a movie called The Last Airbender. What do you think they're talking about here? I mean, you know, these people are, they're being indoctrinated into witchcraft. Big time. I mean, it's on, it's, it's just, it's everywhere. I mean, Katy Perry, uh, was on top of the beast during a uh, an NFL halftime show. I think it was the Super Bowl. I you know I don't watch football anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. So Katy Perry, she was the woman riding the beast. You know they mock us. They think it's funny. Oh, they won't think it's funny when Christ returns, but uh, you know. But I cannot believe the amount of witchcraft on children's shows now. It's just unbelievable. It's just, but the average churchgoer is so ignorant of all this stuff. It's just, it's terrible. So what are you going to do? So, all right, well. This is the end of uh, chapters 6, 7, and 8. Oh, and one more thing. Um, in chapter 7, it says, uh, the last paragraph, it says, And they, the fallen angels, began to sin against sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish. And to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid 
accusation against the law lawless ones. So, I mean, I guess the uh, angels and the giants were sinning against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish. Now, I wonder, what what is that? Personally, I think they were doing genetic modific modifications back thousands of years ago. I mean, you look at the Egyptian gods. You got a, a guy, a man with a bird's head. You ever heard of a centaur? Uh, it was a horse with a, from the waist down it was a horse, but from the waist up it was a man. And then you had the minotaur, which was a man with a bull's head. Where do they come up with this stuff? Where do they come up with all this stuff? I mean, it's just, you know, some guy having a dream and, you know, wrote it down, a sketch. Or were they actually doing this stuff back in the old days? And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish. You ever heard of Dagon? Dagon was the god of uh, the Assyrians. From the waist up, he was a man. From the waist down, he was a fish. You ever heard of a mermaid? Well, that's basically what it was. A merman, mermaid. Um, what was that Disney movie? The Littlest Mermaid or something like that? Yeah. Where, where do they come up with this stuff? Oh, that's right. We're not going to make a movie about Samson. We're going to make a movie about Hercules. Yeah. You know, when I read, so far, reading this book of Enoch, I don't see anything so far that says, that, that goes against the Bible. Not one, well, I'm, Granted, I'm only done the first eight chapters, but so far I found nothing, nothing. And the people say, angels can't have sex. Uh, you're either, you're either talking to somebody that's ignorant of the Bible or they're a deceiver. I, you know, somebody that's, that's never really studied it out. And then they'll quote you, John 3, 16, God loves the world. He wants everybody to be saved. <sighs> Whatever, dude. You know. All right, so this is the, uh, the end of this. We're going to pick up in chapter 9, next lesson. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.